Hi students, good morning to you all. Hope you all are safe. I know problems are there for some children. We have been facing very serious conditions and situations during these days. Yet we have to move ahead. I am very sure we will survive this critic situation also. So let's pray to God for a better condition. Okay, come let's learn English. Hearty welcome to all of you for today's session. Here is your English teacher, Jyoti Mall. Today, in this session, I am going to deal with a poem written by John Berryman. The name of the poem is The Ball Poem. So before getting into the poem, let's learn something about John Berryman. John Berryman was an American poet and scholar. He was a major figure in American poetry in the second half of the 20th century and is considered a key figure in the confessional school of poetry. His, his best known work is The Dream Songs, which is a sequence of 385 poems. Let me repeat the sentence. His best known work is the Dream Songs, which is a sequence of 385 poems. He won many awards like a Pulitzer Prize, National Book Award and more. Now, let me introduce the lesson, the ball poem. The poet John Berryman, through his poem, has described the reality of life which everyone has to face one day. He has touched the topic of how to stand up against the miseries and sorrows of life. This poem is about losing something that you love and learning to grow up. It's about a little boy who for the first time in his young life is learning what it is like to experience grief at the loss of a much beloved possession, his ball. Now, Let's see the line by line explanation of the poem. Listen. The ball poem. I'll give you the introduction. A boy loses a ball. He is very upset. A ball doesn't cost much, nor is it difficult to buy another ball. Why then is the boy so upset? So let's read the poem to see what the poet thinks has been lost. And what the boy has to learn from the experience of losing something. Okay, let me read the first four lines. What is the boy now who has lost his ball? What, what is he to do? I saw it go, merrily bouncing down the street and then merrily over there, it is in the water. So here, in these lines, the poet is talking about a boy. What happened to the boy children? The boy has lost his ball. The boy has lost his ball. What is the boy now who has lost his ball? What? What is he to do? I saw it go merrily bouncing down the street. So, in this line, the poet is talking about a boy who has lost his ball. The poet wants to know about him. And his reaction also, because he has lost his ball, his beloved possession. Again, he asks himself, the poet asks himself, what this boy will do after losing his ball. The poet has seen the ball going away from the boy. He says that the ball was cheerfully jumping up and down in the street. Have you seen the line, children? Merrily bouncing down the street and then merrily over there, it's in the water. So the poet has seen the ball going away from the boy. He says that the ball was cheerfully jumping up and down in the street. What do you mean by this line children? It means when the ball skipped from the boy's hand, it went into the street and later on it fell into the nearby river or nearby water body. Okay, I hope you understood the four lines. So... Let's read the next seven lines. No use to say, oh, there are other balls. 
and ultimate shaking grief fixes the boy as he stands rigid trembling staring down all his young days into the harbor where his ball went i would not intrude on him a dime another ball is worthless now he senses first responsibility okay children let's see the explanation so here some new words are there the meaning of rigid as he stands rigid rigid means fixed then one more word grief grief you know sorrow then what do you mean by dime it's given in your textbook children a dime means 10 cents so a dime means 10 cents and one more word worthless worthless means valueless or useless okay so let's read the lines once again no use to say oh there are other balls an ultimate shaking grief fixes the boy grief means sorrow as he stands rigid as he stands fixed trembling staring down all his young days into the harbor where his ball went i would not intrude on him intrude the meaning is also given in the textbook children here in this context intrude means to enter a situation where one is not welcome a dime another ball is worthless worthless means valueless or useless now he senses first responsibility so here the poet says that there is no benefit of consoling the boy by saying oh there are other balls here the poet says that there is no benefit of consoling or comforting the boy by saying that he will get another ball because he has other balls too he says so because the boy is feeling very sad have you seen the second line children and ultimate shaking grief fixes the boy the boy is feeling very sad he is completely surrounded by sorrow why he is so sad he is so sad because all the memories of the childhood days went down the harbor with the ball so here the poet says that he can't even tell the boy to take some money from him in order to buy another ball so money means here the word written in the lines a dime dime i told you 10 cents so here the poet says that he can't even tell the boy to take some money from him in order to buy another ball because the new ball will not bring the sense of belonging to the boy further the poet says in the last line now he senses first responsibility what do you mean by that last line children now he senses first responsibility now time has come for the boy to learn the responsibility of taking care of his things so actually what's the poet tries to convey to us what does the poet try to convey to us or to the readers so here the poet says that the boy has to learn that in this materialistic world many of his belongings will be lost so this is what is the message that the poet tries to convey children please listen here the poet says that the boy has to learn that in this materialistic world many of his belongings will be lost here the poet personifies the ball as his belongings be it the worldly thing or relationship he is in possession of did you get the last sentence here the poet personifies the ball as his belongings be it worldly thing or relationship he is in possession of i hope you understood these lines a few lines are there children the remaining lines and at the same time the literary devices used in the poem will be explained in our next class it's time to wind up the class children read the poem thoroughly do the work as directed thank you